What's cracking, y'all? Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, Ray G. You can find me on Twitter at Ray GQ. And if you've come looking for rookie content, y'all know y'all in the right damn place. This is the Rookie Report, and this is what we do. And I'm excited to talk through these 2023 rookies with you today because the preseason is over. No more training camp. No more preseason. No more hidden game plans. The next time we see these rookies on the field, they should be producing for us in fantasy football. And that is exactly what I want to dive into in this show today talk about which rookies stood out and potentially are going to find their way having a role early in an NFL offense this season I think we got a good crop of guys to talk about and a lot of things have changed from the moment they were drafted so in order to do that I thought a really fun and really cool way to do this exercise is talk through a two-round mock draft so we're going to do a single quarterback rookie mock draft based on my new rookie rankings I updated those over on patreon patreon.com forward slash y'all gas but y'all know what it is man drop the intro So if it's your first time here on DD, we like to have a good time. We like to have fun. And the only thing I ask you to do is hit that thumbs up button, like the content, subscribe if you find this information actionable and or entertaining. And before we get in, we have to talk about the MVPP, the most valuable preseason player from the 2023 rookie class. No, it wasn't B. John Robinson, JSN, Jameer Gibbs. I'm talking about the Las Vegas Raiders signal caller, Aiden O'Connell is this year's MVPP most valuable preseason player. Aiden O'Connell was incredible. And I have to give credit where credit is due. The only person on the planet that I heard talking about drafting him for fantasy football was a gentleman by the name of Eric Vanek, who hosts the America's Game podcast, used to be on DD, now is with South Harmon. But he talked about drafting Aiden O'Connell. He said the accuracy, I love him, I want him, and damn it, he did it. Aiden O'Connell was the most impressive rookie, in my opinion, from this 2023 class. And Jimmy Garoppolo is the starter. I'm hoping they name Aiden O'Connell the second string quarterback. The young man played with tremendous confidence. And if you can do that, in the NFL, you got a chance. Over the preseason, 41 for 58, 71% completion percentage. I don't care if it's preseason, Madden season, throwing for 71% completion percentage is a very impressive feat for an NFL quarterback to do. 462 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and he led his team to six touchdown scoring drives. This is a young man I'm very much interested in now, where we were not drafting him in Superflex rookie drafts. If we had to redo that again... Aiden O'Connell would 100% be drafted. And I just want to talk about a couple of rookies who moved up in my rankings. Dorian Thompson Robinson, a guy that was kind of under the radar. Nobody wanted him. He did jump up to QB4 right behind CJ Stroud. And then the aforementioned Aiden O'Connell at QB5 for me, ahead of Will Levis, ahead of Stetson Bennett. I move over to running back and talk about some big risers. Evan Hall jumped way up for me, as did Tank Bigsby. We move on to receiver, Trey Palmer, big riser. Another big riser, Cedric Tillman and Michael Wilson. But enough with that, let's go through the mock and have a pretty fun exercise talking through these rookies and how they can impact us for fantasy football at 101. If you've got the first pick and you're looking for the top rookie, there's no doubt about it. You're taking one man and one man alone. That's Bijan Robinson. Bijan Robinson still locked in as the top rookie from 2023. Then next rookie, no surprise, is Jameer Gibbs. Look just as explosive as he did at Alabama. No brainer. One, two, Jameer Gibbs and Bijan Robinson. Maybe some people have a little bit of question mark here at the 103 spot. For me, I'm not changing it. It's Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think even in an offense that has Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and a strong rushing attack, JSN could still be an impactful rookie this year for the Seattle Seahawks. Here's where things start to go a little different for me in a single quarterback half PPR fantasy football league. We're talking about production this season. And if I had to put my money on it from the wide receivers that I want to select right here between Jordan Addison and Zay Flowers, I am going to take Zay Flowers ahead of Jordan Addison for this season. Every report that I read... Every news article that I saw raved about this young man. He was the best receiver in camp, the best receiver that they had out there. Listen, they got this man the ball versus the commanders, and he looked different. I'd take Zay Flowers ahead of Jordan Addison, but we're not going to get too crazy here because Jordan Addison's coming off the board right after Zay Flowers. And if you want to flip-flop these two players, you want to put Addison one, Flowers three, I think all three of these guys are interchangeable. We are not going to go with another wide receiver. I have been so impressed by this young running back, Zach Charbonnet from the Seattle Seahawks. And listening to the beat reporters, I think Charbonnet is going to be a little bit of a headache for Kenneth Walker. You cannot watch 
any snap that this young man took during the preseason and say, this is a guy that Seattle needs to kind of work their way on the field. We'll take it easy with Zach Charbonnet. Zach Charbonnet is not a take it easy type running back. He is pedal to the metal, full steam go. And I think that's going to continue to carry over. Kenneth Walker was dealing with a groin injury throughout training camp. Give me Zach Charbonnet. And I almost want to put him higher than a couple of these wide receivers. But I do think these first round wide receivers are going to get significant opportunity. After Zach Charbonnet, I am going to go right back to the receiver well and take Quentin Johnston out of TCU or of the Los Angeles Chargers. Yes, there are drops. That's what's going to happen with, with Quentin Johnston from time to time. But overall, the downfield playmaking ability, the fact that he's going to be playing with a quarterback that's going to throw the ball over 600 times guaranteed. I want a piece of this offense. So for fantasy football in 2023, if you're drafting rookies, I'm looking for immediate opportunity to score me fantasy points, not two, three years later, right now. Now, after QJ, the second best running back, the second best rookie that we saw play this preseason was a running back out of Jacksonville, and it's Tank Bigsby. So Tank Bigsby is coming off the board at 108. He's playing on the field with Travis Etienne in the preseason. This young man's playing from day one. He has earned some opportunity. He brings a different element to that Jacksonville team with Calvin Ridley on the outside. You've got Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram. You draft an offensive tackle in the first round. They should not be able to pack the box. He's got the power, the explosiveness. Great compliment to Travis Etienne. And at 109, I'm still going to stick at the running back position because this young man could have an opportunity early this fantasy football season to score some points with the suspension of New Orleans Saints running back Alvin Kamara. I am rolling with Kendra. Kendra Miller. First three games of the season, Kendra Miller's got every chance to carve out some meaningful opportunity. And if you've kind of noticed what New Orleans did with him those final two preseason games, did a lot of work out of the backfield, catching a lot of passes, downfield wheel routes, still was not Jamal Williams' role. I think Kendra Miller will play a modified Alvin Kamara role early this season while Kamara suspended. Once he gets back, it's back to being the Kamara show. But if something were to happen to him, I think they're grooming Kendra to take over and assume that role if something were to happen to Alvin Kamara. Let's keep the train rolling at the 110 spot. I'm not taking Kincaid. It's still half point PPR. I'm not taking a tight end this early. I am going to take a running back. It's not going to be AJ, no dues Vaughn. I'm going to go to Chicago. Roshan Johnson that did get some run alongside uh, Khalil Herbert in that final preseason game. Big, physical, strong runner. Much different than the speed element that Khalil Herbert brings to the table. But Roshan Johnson is a three-down back. He is one of the few running backs in the NFL that at least from a size perspective profiles as a traditional bell cow running back. Now, we know he's not going to get those opportunities, but this is going to be a run-first offense that is invested in their offensive line in Darnell Wright. They brought in a player like Mercedes Lewis to help run block up front. They are going to run the ball with Justin Fields, and there's going to be plenty of opportunity to go around because they're running backs, and they get banged up, and they get nicked up, and you got to keep them fresh. Roshan Johnson at 110. At 111, I do feel like at this point, we are going to select right here Anthony Richardson at the 111 spot. If I'm going to take a quarterback in a single QB league, they better be able to run. Now we're sitting here at the 112 spot. If something were to happen to the starting running back, I saw enough this preseason, my goodness, from this young man to say, if something were to happen to the starting running back, I think this rookie could step in and be a high-end RB2 based on what we saw in the preseason. Tajay Spears, I mean, dynamic, brings another element to the off. Looks nothing like Derrick Henry from a size perspective. Outside of Henry being injured, I'm not sure how much opportunity they're going to give him. I don't know what they want to do with Henry. Are they trying to pull back the work? Or are they going to say, we're going to ride you into the ground for the final season? If it's the latter, then it's no good for Tajay Spears. But if it's the former, there could be some a world in which he carves out some opportunity here in 2023, we kick off the top of the second round. Right now, I'm going to put A-Chain at the 201 spot. I don't feel great about it, but JT is not a Dolphin right now. If he is, this changes the equation completely. I'm staring at Dalton Kincaid, and I just want to tell you guys, I just would not do it. Not in a half-point PPR league, but if this were PPR, 
I think it's an appropriate spot to take Dalton Kincaid. Kincaid is going to get the opportunity. It's on a good offense, and he's looked like a damn good player. At the 203 spot, one of the rookies who apparently has had very impressive rapport with Jordan Love, the starting quarterback, and Jaden Reed. At this point, you're damn near in get your guy season. All reports were Reed was a standout in camp. This is a guy towards the middle back half of the season once he starts to get in his groove, and more importantly, once Jordan Love starts to find his groove, Jaden Reed could be a big beneficiary of Jordan Love and potentially the injury to Romeo Dobbs, as well as another wide receiver coming in here at the 2-4 spot who looks like he's going to be maybe an early beneficiary to an injury in his wide receiver room. But I'm talking about Marvin Mims, and I love this player. He was one of my favorite wide receivers coming out. Jerry Judy, he's dealing with an injury and supposedly going to miss a little bit of time. Insert Marvin Mims. Big opportunity to seize this role, to seize a workload in this Denver offense early this season and at 205 a player who coming into the college football season last year everybody was excited about this young man then he got banged up and his teammate is the one that actually popped off but so far early in preseason paired with dorian thompson robinson cedric tillman has looked like a man amongst boys and a player who could actually force his way on the field for the cleveland browns this fall this is a player but later down the line we can all see it right Mari Cooper at the X, Cedric Tillman at the Z, Elijah Moore at the slot, Deshaun Watson's got his weapons, David Njoku at tight end. Cedric Tillman might even need to be a little bit higher on this list. The only thing that's holding him down is at least it's reasonable to assume that Jaden Reed and Marvin Mims have a starter opportunity from day one. Cedric Tillman probably has to work his way through a couple of guys in order to get that opportunity. But if he does, he will seize it. And I think Deshaun Watson will target Cedric Tillman early and often, as well, should Bryce Young be targeting Jonathan Mingo? Get the ball in his hands. Much rawer than some of these other guys. But when he gets the ball, he's running over defenders. Defenders bouncing off of him. So if they can get him the ball, I do think that Jonathan Mingo could be valuable and maybe, maybe even have a little more immediate opportunity than some of these other guys ahead of him. If all these cats that we're talking about in the second round, Mingo, Tillman, Mims, Reed, probably waiver wire ads, right? You're probably going to have Dalton Kincaid rostered, A-Chain rostered. Keep them on your radar. You might be able to snag them off the waivers once they start to get some opportunity. Michael Wilson coming in here and, you know, I'm thinking about this and hell, you can put Wilson a little bit higher. We're talking about production for this year. This is a starting wide receiver. I may want to just adjust this and jump him up. You know what? As we work through this exercise, you can't take some tight end in a half PPR that early. You're not talking dynasty. We're not talking how their values are going to increase over time. We're talking about opportunity in a half PPR league this year. Michael Wilson, bona fide starter. You're talking about a starting wide receiver on a team that's going to be bad, collapsing for Caleb Williams. Could be a team that just throws it around, see what they have in Clayton Toon, see what they have in Michael Wilson. And if they can have a competent wide receiver, in Wilson next to Marvin Harrison Jr. next year when they do draft him number two overall. So we did a flip-flop on the show. Michael Wilson going here at the 2-2 spot, and I'm taking all the receivers over Kincaid. Kincaid at 2-7, I feel fine about that. I mean, it's a tight end. You got to do something. You got to try something. I'm fine with Kincaid there. At the 2-8 spot, this is a player that you can get off waivers. You're not going to draft him for your seasonal leagues, but just keep him in mind as the season progresses. And I'm talking about Jalen Hyatt. The speedster out of Tennessee, Cedric Tillman's running mate. With Daniel Jones, we've seen this young man making plays in practice. He gets in the preseason. He's doing exactly what he did at Tennessee. Another one of these guys I'd rather have in best ball. Sign me up for some Jalen Hyatt. Again, would rather have him in best ball. So the next player off the board here at the 2-9 spot, another player who I will say is better for best ball, but somebody that nobody was really talking about during the draft process. You can't ignore what Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver Trey Palmer has put on wax. There could be some opportunity for Palmer to make some splash plays. Chris Godwin is not a downfield monster like that. He's playing the intermediate short area routes. Mike Evans, a little bit older. He's your downfield threat. Trey Palmer was working in the slot. They're screening him downfield. It looks like they're grooming him to jump into that slot role. And I do think early this season, as early as week one, we're probably going to get some Trey Palmer on the field. Give me some Trey Palmer in best ball. At the 210 spot, another smaller wide receiver. This Houston Texans team, probably not going to be very good as you get closer to the end of the season. Maybe they just want to see what they have in their rookies, right? Let's put Hutch out there, CJ Stroud, Tank Dell. We know Robert Woods is not long for the wear. We got to make a decision 
on a player like Nico Collins. You got Noah Brown there. Tank Dell at the back of the second. I'm willing to take a shot on him in best ball formats. I will go to the tight end well right here. And I actually moved Luke Musgrave ahead of Sam Laporta. So I'm going to take Musgrave here. Apparently the connection with Jordan Love has been incredible. They're running jet sweeps with the cat, doing all of this stuff. He's big, he's fast, he's athletic. Do I really want a rookie tight end for seasonal fantasy leagues? No. So if I had to switch it out with another skill position player, it would probably be Deuce Vaughn. And the final guy that I'm going to put here at the 212 spot, and you can move him up even higher if you so choose, is Evan Hall. If Jonathan Taylor is traded and it looks like E. Hall is going to get some run, I would flip-flop. Go ahead and put Hall here at the 201 and put A-Chain at the 211 or out of there. And as you look at this list, it's crazy how much you know the preseason information, team fits, opportunity changes things. Michael Wilson, nobody would ever draft him in the second round going into the into the draft in April or fantasy rookie drafts in May. Nobody was doing that. You see Jalen Hyatt worked his way back up. Trey Palmer, Tank Dell, Evan Hall here in the second round. Tajay Spears, first round pick because of what he's put on wax so far this preseason. But there you go. These are the 24 rookies that you should be focused on to help you win your fantasy football leagues in 2023. Final rookie mock that we will do. I enjoy doing it, taking another look at these guys. And the next time we do a rookie mock, it's going to be with 24 cats. So appreciate all of y'all tapping in for this show. If you enjoyed it, please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and let me know which rookies you are drafting to help you win your leagues in 2023. Appreciate y'all tapping into the content. Stay locked in. I'm out of this thing. Peace.